welcome back to our class don't forget to subscribe if it is your first time to visit our channel um, today we're going to be looking at uh, plant tissues last time you looked at the different types of uh, animal tissues so today we're going to look at uh, plant tissues so that now we can go to the organs plant tissues what are some of the different types of uh, plant tissues plant tissues are divided uh, based on the kind of the cells which are present in this tissue, which type of cells which are present, then that will give us a, the classification of these uh, tissues. So we are saying that uh, these tissues are divided into meristematic uh, tissue, and then you have the permanent tissues. When you talk about meristematic, um, meristematic uh, tissues, these are tissues which have ability to divide they can, uh, they're undifferentiated. They have ability to divide, they have the ability to change into other forms. While the permanent, it means that they have differentiated, they are done with uh, modification. They cannot modify into another cell structure. So that's why you're saying that they're permanent. They are formed, uh, they are what? They are, it means that they are old. If you look at a, a baby, a baby has ability to modify, uh, become flexible, which is not uh, like a person who is uh, of 60 years old. It means that that person has grown up, cannot change the way that person is, is there. That's how it is. So uh, these tissues, the meristematic tissues, they have the ability to change and they can undergo cell division. While permanent tissues, they don't have the ability to do that. So, if you look at our meristematic tissues, we have what called the apical. These ones are found at the apex, at the tip, on the top or top or bottom of the what of the plant. Then you have the lateral, the lateral, lateral. These ones have the ability to increase. Uh, they in, in 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 sides. Yeah? They have the ability to increase. And then you have the intercalary. Um, intercalary. This one, we find them in mature cells. But for this case, we are going to be looking at um, uh, apical and then lateral uh, meristematic tissues. We will ignore this. Then in on permanent, we have um, uh, what you call simple the one which are just one cell, one cell which is parenchyma, uh, cholenchyma, and then sclerenchyma. These ones, they have different modifications and they, have, they serve different purpose uh, in, in the plant. Then in the <clears throat> complex, if it's not simple, if it's not one cell, then it's more than one cell, which becomes complex. You have the xylem and then you have the flowing. We will find out that one is responsible for transportation of water and mineral salts, or other is responsible for transportation of um, uh, food or manufactured food. <clears throat> so let's look at the introduction. <clears throat> All plants are made up of, number one, <clears throat> meristematic tissues. Those are the embryonic tissues that make uh, new cells for growth. So it means that these cells that have ability to grow. Number two, <clears throat> Permanent tissues, they have the meristematic tissues and then they have the permanent tissues. Permanent tissues, these are tissues that do not have ability to divide and grow. It means that they are fully grown. They cannot modify into another uh, spatial structure. They develop spatial structures for specific function. We're gonna look at them um, and then we'll understand them better. This is how they are located. Meristematic tissue, uh, you'll find out that here you have the lateral, the one which increases the size. Uh, we say that we are not going to look at this one. And then you have uh, the apical uh, meristem. The reason why it is being put here, just to show you where it is located, so that you don't confuse with others. So this is uh, apical meristem. And then this one is uh, lateral meristem. So this, these are divided into two. Number one, apical meristematic tissue that make uh, the plant to grow longer. So if you want the plant to grow taller or longer, then it means that it's the apical. It comes from what the apex, as, as I told you, which means the tip. 
So if the plant is to grow taller, then it means that the plant is supposed to use what you call apical meristem. And then you have the lateral meristem. <clears throat> These tissues make the plant to grow thicker or wider. It means that if you want to be thicker, yes, you may not be growing taller, but you might be growing thicker. Like in this time, we can say that you, you, some, someone has gained weight. It means that he has become bigger. If you are a plant, then it means that lateral meristem are the one which are being used to increase your size. But if someone is growing taller, if you are a plant, for example, it means that the apical meristem is the one which is acting in that regard. So structure of meristematic um, tissues. Number one, we are saying that these cells or these tissues, they are thin, they are very thin. Thin world, immature cells, it means that they can mature they, as they modify. Immature cells that divide often, cells are tightly packed in the layers and rows. So, so, so they are packed. It means that they can grow to give each other space. Then they have no intercellular spaces. There are no spaces in between uh, these cells. They are saying single large nucleus its nucleus is they have only one nucleus and then it is extremely large then you have a dense cytoplasm the cytoplasm is 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 dense it has a lot of um substances uh, in it so that it allows it to grow it could be small or no vacuum at all if it is not there then it means that its vacuum is is very small if it is present because sometimes, or in most cases, the vacuum are not yet there because this, the cell is still uh, growing. Here is um, the, 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 the best example. It is very packed. It's very packed. You see it is uh, no spaces in between. Yes, very packed. But as it, grow, it, it, it continues, you, it, it, it grows. So here is uh, when you magnify it, it looks like this. Yes, it's like a hexagon, uh, very big nucleus, no, um, uh, no vacuum. Um, then the nucleus is very big. Why? Remember, the nucleus controls the cell's activity. So it's supposed to be big so that it can con control of uh, this cell. And then the nuclear, uh, the cytoplasm is very dense. So this is how the meristematic tissue looks like. And then they can modify, they can modify into different uh, structures. So um, what about uh, permanent tissues? When you look at permanent tissues, uh, these ones, uh, they can't modify. Dermo, dermo tissue, these ones, have, uh, they cover the plant. It means that at the, uh, at the outside part of the plant, that's why it's dermo. Dermo mean, uh, means um, <clears throat> it's like a skin. Then you have the vascular vascular tissue these ones they are very important for transportation when i look at them in uh, their categories we have the ground tissues this one they fill the spaces between the epidermal uh, and the vascular tissue so and then they perform other functions so it means that they can also perform other functions like storage so you have the dermo the one which are found at the outside layer of um, of the plant then you have the vascular tissue this one is very important for transportation uh, for example, the xylem and phloem. Then you have the ground tissue. These ones are very important in filling the spaces uh, between the epidermal cells and the vascular tissue. However, they also have other functions. If you look at them, uh, you have this outside part. You'll find out that you have the dermal cells. Yes, there's dermal cells here. Let's look at one by one dermal tissues. This one covers the plant. When it covers the plant, uh, we are saying that sometimes it's called epidermal. Ep means um, um, out or up. Uh, yes, so it is sometimes called the up, outer layer, outer layer or outer skin. A single layer of tightly packed thin walled cells. Uh, we have seen, um, if you look at it, tightly packed, tightly packed. Yes, and it's one layer thick it covers the plant for example the cuticle which protects the plant and the cuticle prevents too much water from being lost so so an example you you can look at uh, the cuticle the cuticle very important in protecting the, the the plant in roots it increases the surface to absorb water 
So uh, you, you, epidermal, it, it can be modified, it forms the roots, and then this root can be, it increases the surface area for the absorption uh, of water from the soil. So here is an example. You have the, the this is a plant, but if you cut it cross-sectionally, you'll find out that there is the outside layer. If you look at this part, yes, just cut just the outside part. Uh, the outside ring is what you call the epidermal layer. So if you cut it and then you magnify it, it looks like this. Yes. So it means that it has the ability to ex to extend. When it extends, it forms what you call the root or what called the root hair. So the outside part is called the jurico. It's uh, very important in uh, preventing this, the um, water uh, from being lost. Uh, very important in absorbing of, of, of sunlight. It allows sunlight to go through. Um, some, it's also very important in reflecting light. It's too much. Uh, Dermot cells, these are the cells. You see that it's one layer thick. Yes, we have the guard cells, these guard cells. Yes, they now they have been modified into guard cells. So to allow air to go in and out of the what? Of the plant. So basically, this is just an illustration just so that you can understand um, uh, the epidermal uh, cells uh, clearly. What you see immediately when you look at the plant, you are looking what called the epidermal cells or the dermal uh, cells. Then you have what you call the ground tissue. Ground tissue include so you have the parenchyma, the chorolenchyma, the chorolenchyma, and then the sclerolenchyma. So they have the parenchyma, 